Hi, Mama. I'm back with more helpful financial information to help you manage your finances for your family in a more efficient, less chaotic way. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm Virginia with Happy Healthy Abundance. So here's the deal. In the past few videos, I've encouraged you to gather your financial information. So we talked about pulling credit, checking all of your bank accounts and your savings accounts and your loans and your credit cards and double checking that against what your credit report says and making sure that you're fully aware and that you have a true, honest picture of your financial situation. This also goes for looking at your savings accounts and your retirement accounts and pulling your paycheck stub and looking at the deductions off of your paycheck stub to see how much you're contributing to your retirement account each month. All of these details are so important to be aware of. So when you start your financial journey, you know and you have a very clear idea of where you started and you know where you're going. So we've talked through several ways to gather this information, things to think about like subscriptions and other things that you pay for month after month that should be listed on your monthly budget. If you've never budgeted before, then you have no list. And so that's why we're creating a list of all our expenses, all our debts, everything that we pay for every single month and getting a very real idea of what those numbers actually are. Not just pulling, you know, estimates out of our head to say, oh, well, I think I pay, you know, a hundred bucks for this because I'll be honest, I used to do that and I was so wrong about the numbers, which was a really big financial awareness creating activity for me. And so I know it will be as well for you. So now that you have all of the information gathered and you have a very clear, real picture of the actual numbers that you're dealing with and facing every single month, now you want to start probably doing like a little bit of cleanup, right? Well, first, let's dive into the differences between the strategies that are out there. So right off the bat, of course, if you see something that you're paying for that you're like, oh my gosh, I meant to cancel that three months ago, yes, absolutely make that phone call, wipe that off your plate, get rid of that expense. At the same time, it's important to look at things and try to determine, am I paying for the same thing basically multiple times? And this might come in the form of, okay, well, we canceled our cable, so that was great. But now we're paying for Netflix and HBO and Hulu and Amazon Prime and, 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 and. And all of those services provide television, right? Different movies, different shows that are available for you and your family to watch. Well, a couple things come into play here. A, you don't have time to sit down and watch every single one of those different providers' shows all the time. And then B, you're paying probably just as much in all those different little subscriptions than what you did back when you paid for cable. So it's really important to kind of look at those expenses and say, okay, which of these do we really use? Which of these really makes us happy? And which of these do we kind of not mind canceling? And go ahead and start to do some cleanup in those areas. I've also touched on there's ways that you can just reduce the bills that you have that doesn't require you to switch or make any big drastic changes where you're canceling a service. One example is your electricity bill. A lot of people don't realize it, but most electricity providers offer contracts where you are charged a certain rate for your electricity for a certain period of time. Well, when that 12 months or that 24 months ends, you're automatically rolled into a month-to-month -month rate. It's very likely that that month-to-month -month rate is a lot higher than the original contract that you signed up for. So it's really important to focus on and keep track of when those contracts expire so that you can shop your rate and switch providers or get under a new low contract again without having to go through a few months of those higher rates. 
So especially if you're in Texas, you can go to powertochoose.org and compare rates very easily. Another option to look at is your cell phone bill. So gone are the days where we have to pay astronomical cell phone rates for data. There are lots of providers out there now that will actually work with your iPhone or with whatever phone that you want. And as an example, we use Net10. We've been with them for years. We love their service. They're great. No, they aren't paying me to say this. And we pay for our family, which is two phones. We both have iPhones. And we pay like 60 bucks a month for a great service. We've never had issues. They have lots of options as far as what service plan you can choose. And you can use one of their phones or you can bring your own phone. So that was a great way for us to be able to reduce our cell phone bill. So we went from paying over $100, probably like $160 or $50 or something like that, down to paying $60. Bucks. So that savings every single month, that really adds up. So look at all of your expenses and start to pick and choose which ones are important to you and which ones really make you happy. From there, you want to start to decide if you have debt, what the plan is for getting rid of that debt. Because you might be like me, where when I went through this, I noticed very quickly that I was paying hundreds of dollars a month in minimum payments to all this debt that I couldn't even remember what I bought with it. So I wanted to get rid of that as fast as possible because I wanted those hundreds of dollars a month to go toward things that actually brought me joy and things that I could actually do with my kids and my family. So I started identifying which creditors had really high minimum payments, how much interest I was paying toward each creditor, what date or upcoming you know, promotional expiration dates were about to occur. So like if I had something on a 0% but it expired in just a few months, Am I going to actually be able to pay that full balance off before that promo rate expires? So I started really being like a detective and going through my creditors one by one and identifying how much I owed, how much the minimum payment was, what the promotional rate balance situation was, when it expired, and the important thing, when my minimum payment was due each month. Once I was able to gather all that information, plus my regular monthly obligations, I was able to really combine these lists and see how much money is actually going out the door every single month. And I'll be honest with you, it was astonishing. <laughs> and for most people it is. So if this is a little bit like, whoa, when you're looking at these numbers, just realize it's okay. And don't beat yourself up over the numbers. That's why you're doing this is so that you can address things and so that in like a month or two from now, you'll be a lot happier with that picture because you'll have maybe canceled a few things, paid off something, moved things around, switched cell phone providers, whatever you have to do to reduce that monthly obligation. Okay, so if you're enjoying this video and you've gotten a couple of helpful tips so far, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and then also give this video a thumbs up because this is helpful information that I'm sharing with you for free. So you want anybody that sees this channel to be able to see, oh, that video has a few thumbs up so that they will go ahead and get this helpful information as well. Okay, now we're gonna talk about debt-free strategies. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. A couple of common strategies out there are the debt snowball, which Dave Ramsey has made very famous, and the debt avalanche, which is based on interest rates. Let's start with the debt snowball. That seems to be pretty basic. This strategy is where you list your credit from greatest balance to smallest balance. And it's based on the balance only. It has nothing to do with the interest rate, when things are due, the promotional expiration dates, or anything else. It's only focused on the balance. And the idea here is that you pay off the thing with the lowest balance first. So maybe you have a debt that is just like $200. And you look at your budget and you say, man, if I squeeze out a couple of things, 
I could pay off that $200. Well, you should, because psychologically that feels like a quick win and it fuels you for more progress for the next month. Let's just make it easy and say that the next bill that you have, so that one was 200, the next one up is 400. Well, you have a month and a half until that bill is typically due. So how fast can you accumulate $400 to be able to pay off that next bill? And so the idea is that you really build up some steam and you pay off from lowest balance to highest balance. So say for example, you have a bunch of credit cards and your car payment. Well, your car is probably got the highest balance, so that's gonna be the last thing that you pay off. So meanwhile, you make the minimum payments on all of your other credit accounts, except for that lowest balance that you're focusing on, and on that one, you pay as much as you can toward it every single month until it's paid off and you get that win and you start focusing on the next one. It's really an exciting way to pay things off. So that is the snowball where you pay the lowest balance off first. The other strategy is called the debt avalanche and this is where you structure your debts in order of interest rate. So you're going to focus on the thing with the highest interest rate first. The idea here is that typically the thing with the highest interest rate is charging you the most dollars in interest every single month and that it doesn't make sense to have a bill out there that's you know five thousand dollars that's charging you 20 percent interest every single month so you would want to focus on that high interest rate and knock that out so that you're not wasting money on interest every single month so you would structure your creditors in order based on interest rate and you're going to pay off the thing with the highest interest rate first. So here again, let's use the car as an example. Most cars, if you financed it through the dealership, you got some kind of cool deal, you might have a really low interest rate on your vehicle. There again, that is probably going to be one of the last things that you pay off because if you have a bunch of credit cards, those are all going to be at a much higher interest rate than your vehicle. So you're probably going to be focused on paying credit cards off regardless of balance and focusing on the interest rate. I personally did a combination of these two strategies when I was going through our finances. For one, I got as many things as I could onto a 0% plan so that I could manage without being charged additional interest and without seeing the balances continuing to go up. So first thing first, of course, was to establish a little bit of savings so that I had a cushion so that if anything unexpected came up, I could still pay cash for that and we weren't using our credit for anything. So we stopped the balances from building right away. Then I put everything in order of based on the interest rate and the balance. So if I had a couple of balances that were small, even though they were 0%, I just went ahead and got rid of them. Simplicity is key, and the less bills that I had, the more clear my mind was able to operate. So pay off a couple of small ones. Oh, the next thing is a 0% deal that expires in three months. So I'm gonna hit that really hard because none of my other bills are charging me interest or you know maybe they have a much larger balance or whatever it was. But I kind of did a combination of these two strategies and made my list of the order of which I was gonna pay off my credit cards. So I've shared before that at that time we were drowning in debt. We have $80,000 in debt and our minimum payments were over $800 a month. It was insane. So when I tell you I made a list of my credit cards, I'm telling you the truth. It was a list. There were at least 10 or 12 credit cards that we had to take care of. And in my case as well, the car was last because it did have the largest balance and it had the lowest interest rate. I hope that helps you. Make sure you've subscribed to this channel for more helpful videos. And if you need any further details about this 
Check in the description for this video below. There is a link to several blog posts that dive into this exact topic, as well as a free budget download that will help walk you through your financial journey because I'm highlighted the exact steps that I did to get us out of that $80,000 in debt five years ago. Thank you for being here with me. I'm Virginia with Happy Healthy Abundance and stay tuned for more exciting, helpful videos about personal finance. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. And if this was helpful, make sure you share it with a friend. I appreciate you being here. Bye.